hell are we gonna do now? I'm totally screwed. I, I don't have time to be walking through the woods right now. Hi there. In this set of tutorials, we're gonna walk you through taking your animation from Maya into something like this. It's easy with Omniverse. We've broken the series into four parts. Animation, look dev, set dressing, and lighting and rendering. Let's get started with animation. Great, so we're in Maya now, and we've got the scene loaded up. It's animated very well, as you can see, obviously, and I can hit play and we get the nice feedback. Um, so what we're gonna do now is try to set up our scene so that we can export our animation over to Omniverse for lighting and, and uh, rendering. And we wanna make it so that we can iterate on the animation if we want to. So what I'm gonna do, uh, we'll work on some different options that you've got. And uh, first thing you've gotta do though, is you notice I don't have the Omniverse plugin here. So you need to load your plugin, uh, which is as simple as searching for Omni. If you've already installed it, you just wanna make sure that that's loaded and hit close simple as that. And so now with Omniverse here, uh, we're able to do a bunch of cool stuff. We can connect stuff, have live connections back and forth, and edit both at the same time, a variety of different things. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to send a number of these things out to um, uh, Light in Create. And so what we're going to do, let's start with this rock we've got selected here. I'm going to export this rock. And in this case, you can see I've already done a bunch of these. So I've set up a directory called Animation Tutorial Shot 1. I'm going to export this as my, well, let's pick this background rock 1. And actually, we'll do both the rocks at the same time. So if you look at, we've got two rocks here. If I play the scene, just sort of help me in the background. So we're going to export both of those at the same time. So we've called them background ro rocks. Makes sense. In this case, I don't have any animation on the rocks, and so I'm just going to use the prop. A prop is as simple as that. It's just basically export the object. I can include the materials here, um, but I don't need cameras or lights or anything else. So I'm going to pick that and hit export. And what that's going to do is basically save off the rocks as a USD file. And um, as I said, it, with the prop option, there's no animation or anything fancy going out. So that is going to be saved out. Now we can do the same thing for the tree and for a variety of different things. So in this case, I've got uh, this tree here. I'm going to pick the main tree and do the same thing. Export. Again, I've already named it here, so I can it's called main tree. Um, hit export. In this case, since I've already done it, I won't bother doing it again. But the idea is you can do this for different things. Now we've got different choices here, so maybe we'll try doing the horse or the knight is something like that instead. So um, let's pick the horse and look at that. So I would export the, the tree as a prop and hit export. We can do that if you like, um, just to stay consistent here. But we've already done that, so I'm just going to hit cancel. Um, so for the horse, he's the first sort of animated thing here. And what we want to do is send out um, just the geometry, I don't need the rig and all this stuff, because if I send out just the geometry, that allows me to, maybe I want to you know, change the rig on the reins, or I want to add some deformers or, or change different things around. Uh, if I'm sending out just the geometry, I can do that all with um, without having to worry about anything downstream, which is quite nice. So if I go in here, I've got all these different things, I'm gonna ignore all this stuff and just grab the geometry. Now in this case, I've got a bunch of stuff here. I've got some other uh, hidden things. So I don't need to grab all of it. And in this one, there's a hidden one as well. So the animator's got a few things hidden. And in which case, I'm just going to grab the stuff we care about and the reins. And it looks like, you know, there's hair follicles and all this stuff that we don't really care about. And so if we just jump to perspective camera really quickly, and just double check that we've got everything that we want. Again, I don't want all the curves and controls. I just want the geometry that's animated. And it's as simple as that. So we can just send that out and say, okay, in this case, I'm going to export out, again, what's selected, but I'm going to switch this to an animated point cache this time. And I'm going to pick horse and I'm going to, in this case, I do want to keep the animation. 
And you notice I've got from minus 6 to 110. That's the range of this shot 1, even though the entire shot uh, ranges a bit further than that. Shot 1 is only this section. So we're going we're gonna to export these two out into two different shots. So uh, we'll keep that range here with the handle, minus 6. I'm going to keep the materials and nothing else. And I'm going to hit export. And in this case, what you'll see is um, it's going to calculate a little bit and it's going to actually go through the timeline and look at all the different frames and send that out. Now, the reason I'm doing the animated cache, as I said, is it's a little bit larger file, but that allows me to have flexibility. If the rig changes or if I need to do something in Maya, I, I can still do that and I just have to export out a new version of that animated cache and we're good to go. And so everything downstream that I do, if I want to change the textures or I want to change stuff in Create to make it, um, you know, do different things, uh, you can do that as a separate layer and then apply it to that anime cache. So we'll show you how to do that. Now I've already done the same thing for the night here. Uh, similar process where you go and you select all the different geo in this case. He's got this geo group here and you would pick all the different bits export that out um, and then the last thing to worry about is the camera and so our camera here camera one it's got a parent constraint and you'll notice if we watch the camera let's just sorry to zoom out a bit so you can see it so this camera here is basically just tracking along in Z right and so while it's parent constraint it looks like to a controller here yeah, a nice little disc. It's not really got any complex animation. It's literally just sort of tracking in Z. And so what I'm going to do is bake it out so that we get rid of the constraint and all this extra stuff. So I'm going to grab the camera. I'm going to switch to my animation menu. And if you haven't done this in a while, this is an easy way to do it. So under key, you can do bake simulation. And we're going to open this up. So you have different options. Um, when you look at it by default, you have selected all keyable, that's good. Uh, time slider, which is good because it's going to pick what we want from this range. Um, but it's going to sample by one. And what that means is I'm going to get key on every single frame. And so in this scenario, because it's such simple animation, I don't want that many keys. I so I'm going to use smart bake and sparse curve bake, turning both of those on and hit bake. What that'll do is now my camera has keys, if I look in the, other, in the graph editor, for where it needs them, right? But you notice I still have the constraint here, and so I'm just going to go ahead and delete that because I don't need it anymore. And if I look at my camera one, now I've got that nice clean curve, and everything else is just keyed appropriately. And the first thing I'm going to do, just to double check everything is appropriate, is that tracks along as we would expect. And if I look back in here, camera one, that tracks along as we expect as well, which is good. And if I hit play, there's no weird jankiness or anything. It's all good. So with that done, I'm now going to export that out as well. Same process. So again, you could export this out as an animated prop if you wanted to in this case. Um, there's no skeleton, so you could do this, which basically sends out a very simple bit of the animation. But I'm just going to use the point cache as well. Um, use animation. Here we go. I don't have any materials, but I do have a camera. So I'm going to turn that on and turn these off. Uh, I'm going to call it camera shot one. And I might even call this camera shot one just so I, I stay consistent. Shot 01 is what I called it. Okay. And export selected and good to go. And so that's going to set up me with a number of different USD files. We've got one for the rock, one for the trees. One for the horse, one for the knight, and one for the camera. And by doing all these different separate files, it gives me a lot of flexibility later to uh, make changes. So if I do want to change just the animation of the horse or his eye or the knight, I can just export individual bits and it'll all update properly. And with that, it's as simple as going into create and starting to load these things. And so, um, We'll stop here, and I will fire up Create, and we'll start loading them in, and you can see what it looks like. All right, see you in a second. So we're back in Create here, and what the first thing I'm going to do is actually save this brand new empty scene. There's nothing here. Um, 
you know, I'm going to default light and that's it. Um, I'm going to save this as in my tutorials folder here, shot one, and I'm going to call this um, the actual main file here. So we're going to call this, um, maybe this is animation uh, tutorial shot one layout. Okay, because we're going to do different shots, so we're, gonna, we're just going to call this and we're going to save that. Okay, so now I've got a USD file with nothing in it. And what we're going to start doing is bringing in the other one. So if I go and I insert sublayers here, and I start bringing in the other files, um, we can start seeing what we've got. So I can bring in the horse. I'm going to insert that guy. I'm going to insert the rocks. I'm going to insert the camera. You can start seeing stuff popping in here. I'm going to insert the horse we did, so the knight we're going to do, and I'm going to insert uh, the tree. Okay, so I've got all these different things. And then, if I just look for a second here in the shot camera, um, you'll notice right away that it should match exactly what you'd expect. So if I hit play here, it's exactly what we're hoping for. We've got the same animation. All, all of that is great. And now we're just a matter of tweaking the background and maybe you want to add a sky here so we can see something going on. So let's just chuck this sky in for now and we can always change it. Uh, and you can see I've got the root layer by default selected and I've got a bunch of stuff turned on so you can see other things. But what you're going to see is basically pretty quickly the lighting and stuff look decent and you can see the sky that I just put in um, if I rotate it you know has an effect on the horse you can see it kind of reflecting and and you know the guy's pants and everything are very reflective so we need to now do what's called look depth and start changing how things look and you can see some of the materials came in perfectly um, some of them, the directories just need to be updated. But what we're going to do is break into a separate tutorial on just look dev and setting up your scene to make it look amazing in Omniverse. And it will be as simple as going into our materials and taking things like, you know, if we go to metal and uh, what would look good on this guy, maybe this cast metal here and just drop it on, you start seeing how oh, this is going to look really nicely. Um, and so, or the buckles, for instance, maybe we want the buckle to be brass. And so we can go here and take the buckles and make, make those brass on the buckles and start getting really nice looks uh, really quickly. And so we're going to spend some time doing that and I will do that in the next tutorial. So we're going to jump into part two now where we start doing that and we set it all up in a way that we can then change the animation and everything just updates. So I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.